70 to 80 years ago, Disney met in secret in the 1960s World Fair released an animatronic Abe Lincoln that astonished both the country and the world. Think about that. Almost a century ago, they made a sort of robot. Let's go over this a bit. They made a robotic electronic puppet. As that technology grew, the next innovation was speaking. No, no wait. Speaking on its own and moving while speaking. In fact, it's not only spoke and moved, it initiated conversation. It was all scripted, of course, but it was pretty convincing. Just like the robot Sophia, who is literally the same thing, but everyone who clickbaits writes titles like most sophisticated robot in 2017, Sophia. The company itself has never claimed that. But let's go back to the animatronic innovations. That very next innovation in animatronic was the expressive animatronics. And let me explain that. So before it was just a puppet. Now they put cheekbones, stuff at the temple, stuff at the brow stuff at the nose so now you could have the animatronic japan has had robots since feudal japan oh it wasn't electronic of course but they had automated automatons that would deliver tea to you and after you drank it it takes the teacup back so clearly automatons or robots were never intended for warfare and why would they they had perfected humans for warfare. As time went on, no matter what company they made, all were fascinated were with robots, and their attitude was completely opposite of the United States. Where the Western nations all thought Muppets and Puppets were for children, and even watching Muppets and Puppets were not something adults did, Japan made robots of parts of their life. They also thought nothing of becoming attached to their robots. For whatever reason, they never exported their robots to the United States. Probably because the U.S. was a suspicious, barbaric nation that believed warbots were of the devil. Also, as barbarians, when more startups are entering the robotics fields and it's taught in regular universities, the U.S. military industrial complex literally controls the entire industry and demand that the industry create military-ready or efficient robots. And that's the future of the United States. Meanwhile, in China. You'd think China would be more in line with the U.S. as far as robots means military. But like Japan, they have lived with robots since forever. Their crowning achievement in public is a princess robot. But again, like Sophia... It is not the best technical achievement. In fact, they're quite honest in say because of lack of funding. It's not a perfect robot. And of course, as I've been saying, it's at a university. The true blue state of the art are all underground personal social robots that people are paying $345,000 for up to a million dollars for a fully custom robot. This is in Japan, Japan and China. Meanwhile, in the U.S., nearly everything in the U.S. is anywhere from 20 to 100 years behind in technology, from cars to toothpaste to food. Instead of giving the public what they want, they shove the cheapest throwaway junk they can buy for pennies and sell for big bucks. Notice Elon Musk in the interviews, and the interviewer says, but aren't electric cars nothing more than lawnmowers or golf carts that only go 20 miles per hour? It's to make this sure the general public keeps this stupid idea that electric cars are not an option. But just to go off on a tangent for a second. In my research into electric cars, the inventors and manufacturers by law are made to put limiters on their cars. Elon Musk was smarter than the government. He got around most of the stupid laws, which was made to keep cars in the 1800s. He introduced a supercar, 
This overcame several limitations. It was no threat to car manufacturers because only a few people could even afford it. It was a supercar, which is supposed to go fast, so no limiter on the speed. It also overcame the distance limitations. So with a $300,000 car, he beat the entire industry, captured the attention of the U.S. public, and overcame the government. Even so, Elon Musk's car is still nearly 100 years behind. Elon Musk has said so himself. The projection of electric car technology from where it was almost 100 years ago to today is almost flatlined compared to combustion engine cars, but combustion engine cars have had the benefit of 100 years of free reign. Remember I said they deliver crap to you? This is exactly right in the car industry. They could deliver a combustion engine that could go a thousand miles on a cup full of gasoline. But we actually are buying SUVs today in droves. We're eating foods that trigger illness and fatality. This is the U.S. Meanwhile, in Asia, the general manufacturers are no better than the U.S., but do give the public what they want mostly. How else could they have the most 100-year-olds and 80-year-olds in the world? Their underground robot companies have full funding and are profitable. They deliver exactly what the people want and are continuously busting the line between human and robot. At first, that line was kept in check. Now, it's gone. You can see robots who look exactly like humans walking down the streets. And in Japan, they have already have reports of such. Please like the video, subscribe, and if you can, you can fund the entire campaign to go to Asia to bring you first-hand documentary for $50,000. If you can donate anything to fund the campaign, go to patreon.com slash shikama. Thank you for watching.